Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. In my update last week, I talked about the possibility of it turning very hot, even suggesting that the UK temperature record, 38.7 Celsius, could be under threat. Well, since then, there have been some extraordinary computer model runs. Just one example here from the GFS, maximum values of 42, 43 Celsius on Sunday the 17th of July. Is there any chance of that happening? I'll come back to it a little bit later on. First of all, though, a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 12th. At the outset, for some patchy outbreaks of rain in the north. Those are associated with a weak cold front and it's moving south eastwards. Ahead of it, very warm, even hot in places, but to its north, cooler and fresher conditions. In the short term, it clears away, but high pressure continues to have a good deal of influence in southern and central Britain, more showery in the north. Then through the weekend, that high pressure builds northeastwards bringing dry conditions to virtually the whole of the UK, perhaps just a risk of rain remaining in the far northwest. It then begins to slip away into continental Europe, and that allows exceptionally warm air to push northwards, potentially at least. But low pressure becomes involved. So by the end, Tuesday the 19th, Wednesday the 20th, there are heavy showers in places. There's a good deal of uncertainty for about how that low pressure area is going to behave. Some computer models are keeping it to the southwest or to the west of the UK, in which case we would be under more of a direct uh, feed from the south, staying hotter and drier at that point, if those other models are correct. But just taking a look at the air mass profile associated with this, this one, the GFS, to begin with, the oranges over southern and central counties there indicating a very high temperatures at about 1500 meters above our heads. Um, cooler air indicated by the greens in the northwest. In the short term, that pushes south eastwards. But then through the weekend, as the high pressure returns, we start to pull up this very, very warm air from southern Europe. And by the end of the sequence, that's covering much of the UK although low pressure is having more influence. That's when it starts to turn showery, or at least potentially. Just worth taking a look at a snapshot, a static view from that um, air mass profile sequence. Um, these are the forecast values for 03 GMT on Tuesday the 19th. Truly exceptional, 21, 22 Celsius over much of the UK, and that plume of warmth is spreading all the way northwards into Scotland, really, really unusual to see this sort of thing happening. What does it mean for the temperatures that we can expect down at the ground level? I'll run through a number of charts. 15 GMT, Wednesday the 13th. That's as the cooler conditions are returning southeastwards, but still 27, 28, 29 in southern England, 17s, 15s, 16s in the northwest. Forwards to Friday the 15th, temperatures have dipped a little more, 27 in the south, but that's still warm, of course, 81 Fahrenheit, cooler in the north once more. Going forwards to Sunday, and now things really get going. Maximums, 33 Celsius in southern Britain, even there in northeastern Scotland, 25 but by Monday the 18th, the temperatures have continued rising. Now 37 Celsius in southern Britain. Now, GFS can at times underestimate temperatures a little bit. I've mentioned this before. I think this suggests that a new record would be possible. I'll give a percentage chance a little bit later. But just look at that warmth in the northeast as well. 28 in northeastern Scotland but it's also going to mean very warm nights, potentially awful conditions for sleeping. Just as an example here, 06 GMT, Tuesday the 19th, minimum temperatures overnight. These are the lowest values that could be expected if the GFS is correct. In the London area, 26 Celsius, 78 Fahrenheit. Even in the north, it's a warm night, very muggy too not at all pleasant 
and by the afternoon, temperatures have soared upwards again, 36, 37 Celsius, once more suggesting a chance of a new record. Monday and Tuesday could well be the days to watch. There is just an outside chance that the heat could arrive earlier, so Sunday also a possibility. Just taking a look at some of the other computer model temperature projections through this period to see how they stack up against the GFS. This from the European ECM, maximum values on Monday, uh, sorry, mean values on Monday afternoon around 33 Celsius. Whereas the GFS charts are showing maximums for the given time period, the ECM one here is showing averages. So the maximums would be somewhat higher. I think we could probably see 35, 36, maybe 37 Celsius if this was correct. The uh, Canadian CMC GEM model on a Tuesday afternoon, exceptional also, 37, 38 Celsius. It's the day when it has the peak heat as opposed to Monday on some of the other ones. A record quite possible if this is right. The UK Met Office global model, um, it doesn't go out as far ahead as the Canadian, so the maximum temperatures it has currently, when I filmed this, were on Monday, because that's as far as it reaches, 33 Celsius, 34 Celsius there in parts of eastern England. A little bit lower, but still into the mid-30s, extremely hot, not record-breaking though, on this particular model run. Taking a look at the MOGREPS temperature projections, quite interesting because peak heat Monday the 18th or Tuesday the 19th. The chart here is for Peterborough because the MOGREPS update was showing higher values in Peterborough and Nottingham in central parts of England than it was in the London area. That would be quite unusual. Some of the runs though go in above 35, 37, 38 Celsius and once again these are averages but there is a Big spread there, so at the top end those 37, 38 are not assured. We could end up with something cooler, but definitely the potential here for records to be broken. Take a look at the European ECM ensemble plot, again showing mean temperatures at the given time rather than maximums. Uh, peak heat, Monday the 18th, Tuesday the 19th, values into the mid 30s Celsius. So add a couple onto those to get the maximums, um, so 36, 37, probably towards the top of the ensemble, maybe 38. Once more, not definite that a record would be set, not definite by any means, but the chance is there. And here's what I'm suggesting. The chance of a new UK maximum temperature record based on the data when I recorded this, 35%. Will we get to 40 Celsius? never ever happened, at least not on record, well perhaps a 10% chance, a low chance of course, but not impossible that we'll get there. It certainly would be a newsworthy event if it happened. Okay, well that's enough about temperatures, what about rainfall? Days 0 to 5, ECM on the left, GFS on the right, Generally dry in southern and central Britain, wetter in the northwest. Very similar to how it has been for much of the time in recent weeks. Days 0 to 10, once again, the highest totals are in western Scotland, but the ECM has higher totals there in much of the northern half of the UK. GFS, interestingly, uh, show some significant rain in East Anglia. I think that's probably associated with the thundery downpours due to the area of low pressure which it was positioning over the southern half of the UK towards the end of the first week. A good deal of uncertainty there though about rain in southern Britain. I think the, the key takeaway here is that the northwest will continue to be the wettest part of the United Kingdom through days 0 to 10. Southern and central regions will probably be having a good deal of dry weather with very little rain. So 
how do the deterministic models stack up against each other in terms of the synoptics, which they're showing the pressure patterns at the end of week one. Here's the GFS, just to recall, Tuesday the 19th, as the area of low pressure, which is bringing the showery conditions, but still very hot. The Canadian model, low pressure a little bit further south, a little bit less developed at the same time, but it is moving northwards. So similar, but just some differences in the details. The German icon, again, low pressure moving up from the south. The European ECM, this one has the low pressure a little bit further to the south west of the UK. And finally, the UK Met Office, high pressure at this point continuing to have more influence, very, very warm feed from Southern Europe. Taking those deterministic models together, details as ever are varying. The general theme though is for very, very warm air to be uh, pushing up across the UK at this point. There is a risk of showers. It's difficult to quantify that because it's varying across the models. But I think the key point to emphasize at this stage is the potential for very, very high temperatures. Mid 30 Celsius strongly favored towards the end of the first week, so Monday and Tuesday. Well, with week one probably ending hot, maybe showery, what are the trends for week two? I'll begin with the 16 day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, and the message here is above average, and there are some hot ones into the mix. Not as extreme as towards the end of the first week there, the mean is falling, that's a thick purple line, but it's remaining above the thick black lines easily throughout the second week, the thick black line being the 30 year average. And as I say, I think it's just worth emphasizing again that there are some very, very warm runs continuing to appear wouldn't be at all surprising to see another spike of heat developing later on. In terms of rain, well, a few spikes, maybe showery conditions, so as low pressure has some influence early on, but a lot of dry weather, although later towards the end there, the number of spikes begins to increase, perhaps, just perhaps, things turning somewhat more changeable towards the very end, but low confidence on that happening, general, idea is for there to be a lot of dry weather through this period. Going up to uh, Glasgow, the signal in terms of air mass temperatures is somewhat different because after a very warm start, the ensemble mean there dips downwards and it then becomes close to the 30 year average through much of the second half of the week. Also, it's, it's wetter, there's an ongoing risk of rain, it's not particularly wet, so for example from the 21st to the 23rd, not many spikes at all. Later on though, the number of them increases, so perhaps more risk of rain towards the end. A look at the 2 meter data table uh, te showing temperatures, London here. For the second week, so the pinks, over 30 Celsius for reds, 26 to 30, and this orangey color here, 21 to 25. It's a warm, very warm or even hot picture, which is favored through this second week of the forecast period. Not as hot as early on, at least the chance of it being as, as hot is, is, is much lower, but still, I think we could well see some days where 30 Celsius is threatened, if this is correct, maybe 31, 32, or even 33 locally on occasion in parts of the south. Looking at the two meter temperature data table from the European ECM model for London though, and this one points towards a little bit of a cooler scenario on the whole, it, as I explained earlier, it's showing averages rather than maximums, but even taking that into account, it does look as though it wouldn't be quite as warm. There's, 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 there's a lot more of the orange, the 21 to 25, and less of the red and the pink, the 26 to 30 and the 30 and above. So ECM going for a somewhat cooler scenario through the second week, perhaps a cooler air mass getting into the mix as the Azores high pressure 
starts to build north eastward, eastwards once again towards the UK, just positioning things slightly different. GEFS, two meter uh, temperature data table for Glasgow. Cooler than in the southeast, significantly so. 16s to 20s dominating, but there is some of a 21 to 25 and a little bit of a red there, the 26 to 30. Temperatures in the northwest closer to the average than in the southeast. The 10-day uh, mean pressure chart from the GEFS model, so valued on Friday the 22nd, has high pressure from the Azores, building northeastwards towards the UK and over it. Quite a settled scenario looking to become established once more by this point, and temperatures would be rising. The European ECM model also has the Azores high pressure building north eastwards. Not a great deal of difference, but as I say, the suggestion from the uh, two meter temperature data tables was for it to be a little bit cooler on the whole, especially in the south. Finally, the uh, data table showing mean surface level pressure uh, forecast from all the runs in the GEFS for York through the second week. The average in July is approximately 1,014 millibars. There is something of a trend downwards later on, more green showing, 996 to 1,010. Probably though pressure remaining close to or above the average even towards the end there, indicating the likelihood of a lot of settled weather. So, to summarise, week one, patchy outbreaks of rain clear southwards and they are followed by cooler and fresher conditions. There will then be showers in the north, but it's mostly fine in the south. Later on, temperatures climb once again. It becomes hot or very hot. The mid 30 Celsius are very probable through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, and upper 30 Celsius may be reached. Therefore, there is a significant chance for new UK record, probably about 35% at the time of filming this. The chance of 40 Celsius is much lower, but not entirely out of the question. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Later on though, the possibility of thundery showers also increases as low pressure comes into the mix. So week two could start on a showery note, still very warm or hot. It then becomes progressively more settled as high pressure starts to return from the Azores. Temperatures often above the average, particularly in the south, where it may still be very warm or even hot at times. So there we have it. Some exceptional heat is strongly favoured towards the end of the first week, possibly record breaking. And then in the longer term, a very summary feel to the weather, I think, especially in the southern half of the UK, not as hot, but still the potential for it to be very warm. Temperatures may well be nudging 30 Celsius even later on through the second week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, do please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.